God bless everyone. Amen. Thank God for his presence. Hallelujah. Being in the house tonight. Well, it's my assignment to introduce our very own mother, Helen Moreta. I just thank God for this woman of God. Thank God for her energy. Thank God for her faithfulness, her youthfulness. I said, you just raised the bar on like, yeah, when we get a certain age, I mean, trying to sit down and not do nothing because you just put people to shame, okay? <laughs> you do, mother. Thank God for her family being here tonight, amen, to support her, amen, and her sister, her son, her daughter-in-law. God bless you all. Mother Helen, affectionately called Mother... Mother Helen Barreto, affectionately called Mother Helen, was born in Hampton, South Carolina, and moved to New York at the age of 15. She was educated in New York, was married, and had two sons. Mother Helen attended Bethel Light Community Church in Harlem, New York, for 17 years and received her biblical training and knowledge there. She served as a Sunday school teacher for 12 years was ordained as a deaconess, was a church clerk, sang on the choir at Bethel Light Community Church. See? Mother Helen moved her membership to Through the Word Christian Ministries in New York and served as a Sunday school teacher for eight years. Upon retiring from the Bronx La Lebanon Hospital with 31 years of service, Mother, amen, amen, Mother Helen moved to Charlotte. North Carolina in 2009. She visited several churches and upon visiting the University City Church name at the time in 2010, she knew this would be her church home. Praise God, yes. At the University City Church, Mother Helen served in the nursing home ministry, is currently serving in the willing workers ministry, is called upon assist with office duties, is a growth track teacher of 101, amen, faithfully teaches oversee 101 class, and serves on the mother's board of City Church Northlake. Mother Helen's deepest desire is to continue to serve in the house of God, love everyone, and ultimately hear the words from her Lord and Savior, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. So we sung your song tonight, huh, Mother? Well, let's receive Mother Helen at this time, this faithful servant of the Lord. Amen. Let's receive her at this Say it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy. Amen. 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 First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Amen. Giving honor to my pastors, Michael and Sharon Stevens. And uh, you know what? <laughs> I was floored when I got the call that I was asked to speak tonight. <laughs> My heart started racing. I said, oh, God. <laughs> but you know, God is able. And I thank God for Pastor, Pastor Sharon. Pastor Sharon, you have faith in me that, you know, that's unparalleled. And I thank God for you. I thank God that you saw something in me that was worthy to stand before your people tonight. I do. I thank God for you. She pushes me. You can do it, mother. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it, mother. You can do it. And I'm standing trembling in my boots and saying, you can do it, mother. You can do it. Well, I praise God for her for giving me that push, you know, because sometimes we need that. We really do. God is good and God is able. And I just want to thank him for the opportunity that you all have given me to be here tonight. You know, I thank God for my family. I, I know they're here somewhere. I thank God for them. And I thank God for my Christian family. I see some that said they would not be here tonight, but I see their back tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because I told them, I said, I want to see you in the house tonight. That's right. And they came back. And they know who I'm talking to. Amen. God is good. I love my church family. I love being in the uh, City Church North Lake, which we are now called. The first time I came to this church in 2010, Pastor Stevens was in Israel with Pastor John Hagee. And it came up on the LCD screen that um, he was in, in, in Israel with us. And John Hagee was my televangelist pastor at that time in 2010. I loved that man. And when I heard that Pastor Stevens was in Israel with him, I said, God, are you telling me this is my church? And Pastor Stevens said on LDC, I can, I'll never forget it. He said, please come back next Sunday because I won't be there, but I'll be back next Sunday and I want to meet you. And I could hardly wait for next Sunday to come. I could hardly wait. And when next Sunday came, I was here. I was there. And um, I had never been in a church before where they would say uh, the pastor and the first lady would have a room set aside to greet the, the visitors. 
I had never experienced that before. When I experienced that, I said, God, this is something special right here. And I came back, introduced myself, and here I am 14 years later. Here I am 14 years later. God is good. God is good. Tonight, um, I want to bring to you a brief word. This is a sermon that I was told, and I was told we had a, not too long to speak. And I have a lot of stuff to say, because Pastor, Sh <laughs> Pastor Sharon knows I talk long. Pastor Sharon, Mother, you can speed it up a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, there was a song on my heart ever since Lynette Hunt called me. My, uh, Sister Lynette Hunt, she called me. And, and, and this song came into my heart, and I want to sing a little bit of it. I'm not a singer. But it says, and y'all can jo join me because it's only two, one close, so I'm going to sing. And it says, oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his to tell us something. Listen. Listen. With an exclamation point. Listen. God is trying to tell us something, y'all. We need to listen. Amen? We need to listen what God is trying to tell us. And also, will we be ready when Jesus returns? Will we be ready when Jesus returns? I'm coming from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the, 30, the 37th through the 40th verse. And it reads, to be ready when Jesus comes. We must love the Lord our, our, with all of our heart, with all our soul, and all our mind. And Jesus said the second commandment is like, that's the first commandment. And the second one is like this, to love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew, the 22nd, through the thir uh, 22nd chapter, the 34th. Uh, seven through the four, this verse, and Deuteronomy, the six fives, add another one. He said, with your strength, yes. love with your strength, with all your soul, your heart, your mind, and your strength. This is what Deuteronomy says. And for us to love Jesus with, and it's a process. It's not a, it's a process that we go through to love the Lord thy God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with our soul, and all our strength. It don't happen the minute you get saved. It's a process you have to go through. And as we go through that process, you will learn to love God and you will have, you will have this desire to do his will in your life. You will have this desire. Because see, what the devil does, the devil wants us to serve him. You know that, right? The devil wants us to do those things that pleases him. But God says no. God wants us. He does not want to lose any of us. He desires that we all be saved all come to the knowledge of him and none of us be lost but be aware of the enemy because he come to kill to that's steal right. and to destroy Jesus. that's what he come to do right. but god says i've come that you might have life yes, yes, and yes. have life abundant amen? amen and these are some of the steps that i wrote that i hope you will take amen. them into your heart um, the first thing I think we should do after learning to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, 
The second thing I think we should do is repent and turn from our sinful behavior. Turn from your sinful behavior. Because let me face it, God says, let's face it, God says he will not hear our prayer. You know, we're going to all sin at some point, whether in word, thought, or deed, at some point in our lives. But listen, God don't want us to be habitual about it. Don't live a life of sin. Because that's when you come in trouble with God. And we don't want to become reprobate. Amen? Nobody wants to become reprobate. No, that's not it. Turn away from your sinful behavior. Next, live in the light of God's word, the Bible. Live in the light of the Bible. When you live in the light of God's word, the Bible, and there's nothing in the Bible that God does not tell us what to do and how to live a holy and righteous life before him. It's all there. All you got to do is read it. Read it. When I first got saved, God just had me to pick up this Bible, and it's not this one, but a Bible, and just read from Genesis to Revelation. I did not understand all I was reading, but I kept on reading. I kept on reading, and then eventually I was taught, and then I got it better. But God wants us to live in the light of his word, the Bible. And if we do that, we'll be found pleasing in his sight. Yes, we will. Amen. Then be discerning of what is true and what is false. We have to be discerning of what is true and what is false, y'all. Because the Bible says there are many false prophets going out there. And we have to know what is true. You, I'm listening at television sometime. I don't hardly do it anymore, but I used to look at it a lot. And I would see preachers up there, and they were saying stuff that's error. But being that I have read the Bible for myself, I knew. I knew it was error. I said, no, I don't receive this. And then I'd turn to another station. That's what I would do. Amen. Because I know I'm not going to sit there and listen to some false teaching. No way. I'm not doing that. Be discerning of what is true and what is false. Okay, except the uncertainties of this world. Be able to accept the uncertainties of this world. Because, see, this world has a lot of uncertainties. And when I uh, read, uh, thought about this, read, wrote this out, the serenity prayer came to my spirit. I'm sure most of you all have heard the serenity prayer. You probably read it many times yourself, but I'm going to read it for you. And it says, God, grant me the serenity. The serenity, that means the peace. The peace. The, un, the untroubledness. The, un, the calmness. The serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Change what you can change. And have ask God for the wisdom, because wisdom comes from God. I mean, the wisdom of this world, okay, we know about wisdom, that comes from the enemy. But the wisdom of the wisdom from God is what we need to be seeking after. Amen. We need to be seeking after the wisdom from God. And the next one, I said, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. You know, uh, I remember this, um, uh, I was talking with Jesse Jackson. He always made the statement, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Don't lose hope. Hope thou in God. That's who we need to hope in. We need to hope in God. Because God is the only one that got things for us that we need in this life. You know, the world has a lot of things to offer, but those things are temporal. We need eternal hope. We need the things that God offers us that's going to last us through eternity. Amen? Amen. Because the things of this world are so temporal. Here today could be gone today. Here today, gone tomorrow for sure. (laughs) But the things of God is eternal. And those are the things that we need to focus our lives on. Amen? Next one is encourage one another. We need to be about encouraging one another. I pray to God in this City Church North Lake that there will not be one of us. And when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me too. Not one of us will not be able to encourage one another. Not, not have no, like, like they say, schisms in the body, as the Bible said. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want to love one another. We want to be there for one another at a time of need. We want to help one another when help is needed. The best of our ability. We want to really just love one another, encourage one another. Because we all need encouragement at some time. We really do. We do. And the next one is lives as is to live 
live as if today was the day. Live as if today was the day. And it could very well be. We don't know. We do not know when Jesus is coming. He could come while I'm on this phone talking to y'all right now. He could. We have to live our lives today as if it was the last day we have on this earth to live. That's what we have to do. Because we don't know the day or the hour. We just don't know. And the last one I said was, keep on doing the work Jesus left for us to do. Keep on doing the work that Jesus left us to do. Jesus left us work to do. And sometimes we get slack in doing it. But he left it for us to do. And we want to hear the song was said, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear him say. Amen? Amen. Amen. Micah 6, Micah 6 and 8 says, he has shown you, O oh man, right. what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, Justice. to love mercy, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. That's what the Lord requires of us, to, to love one another, to do justly, to love mercy. You want somebody to have mercy on you if you, if you need it, right? So why can't you have mercy on somebody else? To love mercy and to do justly. Don't try to cheat your fellow man out of things that's due to him. Do justly and to walk humbly before God. God loves a humble spirit. He does. He loves a, He don't like a puffed up, prideful spirit. God loves a humble spirit, y'all. He loves that. And let's walk the way God would have us to walk before him. Amen? Amen. Let's do it. Ephesians 5, 26 through 27 says, Husband loves your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, having, ha, not having spot or rank or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The word of God said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Some, some, some on writing said blemish, wrinkle, all the same thing, all the same thing. God is coming back for a church. I pray that we be that church. Amen. I pray that we be that church. When God come back, he will find us without spot or wrinkle. So we can truly hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 6 says, and Paul told Timothy to pray for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may be that we, be let, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desire all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God does not want any of us to be lost. He wants every last one of us to be saved and come to the knowledge of him. He don't want us to go off and, and live any kind of beggarly life and glorify the devil. He wants us to please him because he don't desire that we all, he don't desire that one of us go to hell. And we have to realize when we glorify the devil, that's where we're going. Simple as that. Go in hell. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us to know, God, that we need to please you with our lives. We need to please God with our lives. And God will be well pleased with that. First Thessalonians 1, 5, 1 through 11, um, I, I, I don't have it um, written out, but it says, the day of the Lord will come. And we know that scripture. Yes. The day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night, y'all. We don't know the hour, we don't know the day, we don't know the time, but he's coming. And the Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. And the Bible also says that if the good men of the house knew that the thief was going to come, yes. He would have stayed awake. He wouldn't have gone to sleep. But listen, we got to know. We got to know. We don't know when God is coming back. So we have to live every day of our lives as though he's coming today, as coming tonight. We have to live like that. We really do. And if we don't, we are putting ourselves in jeopardy to lose, miss out on eternity. And we all want to make it in. I don't think there's a person in this room that don't want to make it into glory. If you say that, something is wrong with you if you don't want to go to glory. Because God has made some wonderful promises to us. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to heaven? 
Who would want to walk streets of gold? Who would want to be in the, with all those uh, diamonds and pearls and, and emeralds and the, 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 the walls? Ooh, who would want to be a part of that? The word of God says in Revelation, where there will be no more crying. There will be no more sadness. There will be no more pain. Or death. When our loved ones die, we just get so sad and so heartbroken. None of that. The old things have passed away. All of those things would have passed away. Who would want to live like that for eternity? And it will be for eternity, not temporal. Eternity. eternity. This, world, this world offers us temporal. Heaven offers us eternity. Amen? Amen. My, my closing statement to you tonight is this. If you're not ready, get ready. If you're not ready, get ready. And if you are ready, stay ready. If you are ready, stay ready. Because we don't know. We can go daily hour. We could go home tonight and be sleeping in our bed. He might come. No, but let's be ready. Church, let's be ready. Because see, when I get to glory, like um, like, like Marvin Wine says, millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones who did. One of the ones who did. Millions didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones who did. And I pray to God that all of us be one of the ones who did. Every last person in this room. One of the ones who did make it. Amen. Pray God. I'm done. Praise the Lord. <laughs>